How is it going guys, Linux today back with another distro review. Sorry about the lack of video yesterday. I I recorded the video, but somehow the audio didn't go through from the microphone. Like the little scroll bar kept going up when I talked, but it didn't record for some reason. So that's why there's a little bit of delay delay. So the pros and cons or dish um pros and cons or the uh um top five is gonna be postponed. But I apologize for that. Today's dish or review will be taking a look at Manjaro Linux. Comes with a couple different flavors. Um, features XFCE, KDE, this is the one that we will be checking out today. Gnome, and the Architect, which is just a CLI version of Manjaro. And then those are the actually supported ones. And then there's community releases of the awesome window manager. BSPWM, Budgie, Cinnamon, Deepin, i3 Window Manager, LXDE or LXQT for lighter weight, Mate for lightweight, open box, and that seems to be it. You could also install it after a fact with Pac-Man. Because this is a rolling release built off of Arch Linux. So with that being said, let's jump in. Alright guys, we are booted into our ISO. So, welcome to Manjaro. We have a option to pick non-free drivers, but I'm going to leave them at the free version, open source. Continue on with your boot sequence. So, don't know how long that's going to take. Just get your typical your typical boot screen for a Linux distribution. Not really anything fancy, but it lets you know what is going on underneath the hood. Unlike Ubuntu based distributions where it has a nice uh, fancy splash screen. Where if something is not loading right or booting right, you wouldn't exactly know what is going on. I like it this way better in case if you have a couple errors and your system won't boot you will understand why so looks like it's loading up here pretty good yep I will get back to you once it is fully booted alright guys it is booted up we get our Manjaro hello and all of that. So this is just plain and simple Manjaro right now running off the live ISO. So we're going to click the install Manjaro Linux. And that is correct. Yep. Uh, let me test this. Yep. And then a couple different options here actually. So I picked this one, this 153 gigabyte virtual hard disk and then I'm going to erase the disk if you want to run a dual boot system you're going to want to manually partition that as well so I'm not going to do that I'm just going to click erase disk then it, there's an option here to encrypt our system which I am not going to do so I'm going to go ahead and type in if I can type the name and then that's going to be our login host name and the, and the name of this computer if you want to change that it's going to be right there type in a very secure password type in another very secure password for the administrator account aka root click next this all looks correct to me and then I'm going to click install and then install now this part is probably going to take a decently long time, if that's even a word, I don't know. But it is probably going to take a while, so I will get back to you when that is complete. Alright guys, it looks like our installation is complete. It is all done. Manjaro 17.1, I'm not going to try to pronounce that, has been installed on your computer. and may, You may now restart into your new system. 
will continue to use the Nandera Live environment. Well, I'm going to click this restart now and click done. This might take a little bit. It looks kind of glitchy on my end. All right, so I'll boot it to the um, ISO again. So I'm going to go down to installed bio system and click that. All right, guys, here is our drub boot menu. We have three options on this one, Manjaro Linux, advanced options for Manjaro Linux, and memory tester which is a well what it is memory tester tests your memory but we are going to boot into manjaro linux so it has one of those standard uh bare bones kind of boot screens but it does let you know if you're having issues so if it doesn't boot up quite right you could see what is going on Alright, so we are in our Linux, Manjaro Linux. So let's have in our very secure password and log in. Let me move the microphone here pretty quick. Sorry about that. So it is loading the KDE environment right now. I do not know how long this is going to take. The screen turned black. I'm seeing something on the screen. All right, here's our Manjaro hello, but it doesn't look like the full environment loaded quite yet. Usually when you first install, it does take a little bit. This one actually looks different than the one that was in the live the live image because it does not have the install now. So now that we're into our uh, our um, install, let's go take a look at what comes pre-installed. Under development, you get a lot of these Qt. Uh, bus viewers I don't know exactly what these do but it is what comes in we're getting a lot of notifications down in this corner of the screen and general settings manager so that was in the development under uh, education we get two options mathematics would you get LibreOffice math and then science, you get the same thing. For some reason. Under games, you get Steam installed by default, which is really nice. And if we go back, the computer's being a little slow. In the graphics, you get Document Viewer, LibreOffice Draw, an image scanning application that I cannot pronounce, Glenview and Inkscape. Internet, you get an SSH server browser, DNC server browser, Qubit Torrent, KGIT, Conversation, Thunderbird, Microsoft Skype Online, Steam once again, and Firefox. Under multimedia, you get VLC, Cantana, and allow testing video for Linux devices, which is another QT, uh, utility under settings you get graphical settings for manjaro linux that's a kde application this is another kde application the graphical settings manager print settings and system settings which we'll we will take a look at in a little bit office of course you get LibreOffice, and also you get office uh, microsoft office online for some reason but I would just say stick with LibreOffice because it's most likely better anyway settings we've seen all these except for print 
wait, yeah, we, I think we've seen print settings actually. Under system, you get add and remove software. It's a little, uh, pretty much a Pac Man, but GUI. You get a zero count browser, a drop down terminal, which is a terminal that drops down from the top of the screen. Other than that, it does the same thing as console, which is KDE's default. File manager, you get Dolphin, Info Center, Cups, which is a uh, print manager, Manjaro Hello, which we already saw, a cache cleaner for uh, Octopi. Actually, you get a KDE um, partition manager for, instead of G part of it, it looks like. Under the KDE version, a lot of resource and log monitors here as well. SUSE Studio Image Writer. You could also use DB to uh, burn images to USB. Let's take a look at utilities. We get Kate for your text editor, Arc for archiving, disk usage statistics. You get a uh, BioLite, KFind, Manjaro User's Guide, HP, HP Device Manager, KCalc, Spectacle as your screenshot utility, and again, Suse Studio Image Writer. Help Center is where you get help, obviously. So actually, let's take a look at the settings for Manjaro Linux KDE. Wait for this to load here real quick. Let me full screen the window. Under hardware configuration, you could pick which video driver you want to use, or you could click all devices and pick which driver, which uh, device gets which driver. Kernel, you could pick which kernel or flash a, not flash, um, but install and use a different kernel. My mic keeps falling down for some reason. But you get all that right there. Keyboard settings, pretty self explanatory. You get to pick which uh, keyboard layout you're going to use. Language packs, locale, time and date. You get to change your time and date right there. So it looks like you could actually add a user account from the settings right here. Workspace theme. Actually, let's. Uh, Theme up um, Manjaro Linux and see what we can get. So currently it's using Breathe. Breeze looks like um. Actually, we need to click Apply. All right, give it a little bit. All right, here is Breeze. So pretty much a really light theme. Breeze dark click apply obviously we'll make all this dark as shown here this looks the same as the breathe theme oxygen I'm pretty sure makes it look a little older yes I stand corrected um no I don't stand corrected this is um it, yeah it makes all the icons look older but I'm gonna put it back to the breathe theme because it I honestly think it looks the best now desktop theme you get a pink like uh, what the, the icons down here and in here look like I don't know why this virtual box thing keeps popping up but let's just close out of that Cursor theme, you gotta pick a custom cursor, it looks like. Yes. I'm gonna leave it at just the regular one because I honestly like it the best. You get KDE Classic, which is nice if you're a throwback KDE guy. Colors, fonts, icons. Icon theme, maybe. Yes, indeed. So if you're into the older icons, Oxygen will probably be your theme, or you could probably install a 
different one and use that one. Application style, I am not exactly sure what these do. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure what these will do. But if you want to make it look really old, pick this one. Desktop behavior. This will change the way, um, this card, whatever I did. Desktop behavior will change how, um, the desktop will behave, obviously. But, like, you could have it show FPS. Exactly sure. Oh, I have to click apply. So, yes, if you look up here, it's showing the current FPS, which is awful because it's a virtual machine. Now, let's reapply that and get rid of it. Show paint. Oh, I do not like this. This is freaking out. Probably a developer option. Touch points. That is most likely a touchscreen option. Dim inactive will probably be a good idea. So we'll uh, dim for administrator mode. I'm going to select these and click apply. Invert the colors, snap helper, and all of that will reside here. So if you're a gamer, probably show FPS will be a good idea. Window management, change the way the uh, windows, like, if you want to um, hover over a window and activate it, like, switch windows, switch this all the way to hover, but sometimes I can get in the way for me, so I'll keep it at click. And then, I'm just going to discard that just for the purpose of the video. So... You can do some different keyboard shortcuts to switch tasks. I'm going to look at the default. Kwin script. Minimize and restore. Okay, so these uh, looks like uh, these scripts. Um, Yeah, these uh, scripts are nice, especially this one. If you're running multiple um, multiple monitors, you can uh, span the full screen video over all attached screens to create a video wall, which is actually really cool. I want to try that out one time. Startup shutdown, probably uh, startup applications. Actually, no, this is your logon menu. So you could pick different ones or install a theme to pick a when you log in this is what you would see now here's where your auto start applications will be you could run a script as well like an update desktop session you could uh, probably change the options in here oh did you see that the option I select them um, this turn darker when you uh, got on I actually like that search plasma search Pretty self-explanatory, actually. Account details, regional settings, notifications. You can change your notifications here. Change which applications give you which notifications. Personalization. You get to pick what your default um, applications would be. And so on and so forth. Network. You get all your network options, of course. And hardware. KDE Connect is actually a KDE only, obviously, but it lets you click connect your uh, smartphone running KDE Connect, the application, to allow file transfer, remote control, like if you're uh, using Cantana, you could switch songs and do all that, all from your phone, which is actually pretty cool. I don't know how secure it is, though, because it uses Wi-Fi. So that was a quick look at these settings. Now I'm yeah, you go down here, right click it on a your desktop to go to configure desktop because it's not in the settings for some reason actually. 
full screen this for you guys. So it looks like this is where we're going to change our background. Put this one on and click apply. Yep, it did change. So that's how you change your background mouse action. So let's check that out. I've actually never messed with this. Well, that's neat. So let's open up Dolphin and test what my uh, change just did. Let's wait for Dolphin to load here. There we go. Now Dolphin. I'm actually going to apply the setting. It actually... Um, it's not working how I want it. Switch window, maybe. Yeah, that is not working. But if you use switch, uh, switch desktop and minimize everything there, and you use a scroll wheel, it will switch your current working desktop multiple uh, desktops down over here which I am actually not a big fan of but there's your option you could also pick it from a uh, right click middle button and so on and so forth so that's all the options for that let's take a look at tweaks yeah so that's all the options for that now Built off Arch, so Pac-Man is your package manager, so updating is Pac-Man-SYU. You probably want to run it as root, though. It's having a very secure password. It doesn't look like there's a whole lot of packages that need to be updated, but updating an Arch-based system is kind of risky, though. Kind of like playing Russian Roulette, but the package manager, yes, yes, and continue. So this is probably going to take a while, so I'll just stop the update. So this is just a virtual machine to install packages. Pacman syu. Not um no, sorry about that. Pacman s and then a package name. So Pac-Man dash S and I'm just gonna pick screen fetch. Which does that. Shown this utility in multiple different videos, but there you go. So that was a quick look at the terminal. Now um I saw the uh Yeah right here. Little um GUI version of that does not look as clean as a uh, like the one that comes with um the one that comes with um like Ubuntu or Fedora does it does not look as clean so you can search applications up here yeah I've never really used this one as well so I am not familiar with this package manager I just do everything with the command line but they give you the option here so that was my quick look at Manjaro Linux featuring KDE probably not a Linux distribution I will recommend for a newer user but if you are experienced with Linux and want to get out of Ubuntu or you know Linux and want to switch to if you know Linux and want to switch from Windows to Linux but you have prior experience with Linux it's probably be a good distribution it looks really like Windows you could also customize it to look completely different but by default it looks like Windows so that was my quick look at Manjaro Linux hope you enjoyed this video I'll catch you in the next one